before we begin, thank you very much to Final Fusion Gao Gaigar, the King of Braves, for joining the Patreon campaign. Uh, thank you very much for the support. Thank you very much for pitching in and helping the channel stay around. Uh, I would you I would say I would give that line its proper due, but I'm in a public space with neighbors right through this wall, so there is only so loud I can scream. But nevertheless, thank you very much for the support. We are back to the Here's 10 for every year of Transformers, and we are at 1989, and I told you this is where it starts getting messy, and you have no idea how messy I meant. So, Pretenders started getting smaller. The inner robots were actually a little bit more traditional in style, but the, the shells themselves were shrinking down a bit. And we got a lot of different varieties. We have Pretenders Classics, Monster Pretenders, Mega Pretenders, Ultra Pretenders. Every idea they had, they threw all at once to see if they could salvage this run of Transformers in this year. At the same time, the Micromasters started becoming a thing with a lot of their various play patterns and multi-packs. And multi-packs are kind of the theme of 1989 no matter what shore you're on. Over in Japan, they went back to the stuff that just kind of always worked. Big figures with brand new gimmicks and combiners and almost everything was available in a multi-pack which kind of leaves me in a bad situation if i just look at individual toys it's really not fair you know what is fair about looking at just big daddy from the micromaster hot rod team and not looking at the other three toys that he came with but that kind of goes against the original idea and then you think about it almost everything in 89 was some kind of multi-pack in one way or another. Whether it's a Micromaster that comes with a bunch of teammates, a Micromaster that comes with a giant transforming vehicle, or yes, in Japan, where almost everything that com could combine came out individually, as well as in a multi-pack. And in some cases, they were only available in two packs, which starts getting a little bit messy. And then, of course, you got Pretenders, which are already two toys in one, and that gets blurred even more with the Mega Pretenders, with the shells that transformed. So here's what I've done. I have decided that in order to talk about the stuff that you kind of want to hear in a top 10 like this, I have to count the multi-packs as individual toy releases, which means this is just going to be a cheat year. You know how diets have cheat days? This countdown has a cheat year, and so far it's 1989, because there's really no other way of doing this. It's unfair to previous lists, where I did individual combiner members who are available in gift sets, but you know what? I'm working with what I've got here. So, with all of that said, here's a very cheaty list of the top 10 toys of 1985, and it is going to start with something a little bit familiar. I do need to throw some normal pretender on here, because in the context of 19. 89, they were not bad toys. In the context of Transformers as a whole, that's a different story. We are focused on one year and one year alone. And if number 10 is saved for a personal favorite, I'm going to give this to Bumblebee. So let's get this straight. The classic pretenders, especially the Autobot ones in particular, fixed a lot of problems I had with pretenders previously. These felt like extensions of the main character that's inside right? So like being yellow and kind of having the same kind of roundish aesthetic, I kind of can see the, you know, this, you know, big super armor character as this kind of an extension of Bumblebee. It helps blur it. And Grimlock and Jazz kind of did the same thing. And then you just have the inner robot, which is just a vastly improved version of the original Bumblebee toy. Aside from it's just, it's bigger, it transforms better. Uh, the head, isn't weirdly sculpted. Actually, it is weirdly sculpted. It's Cl it's Cliff Jumper's head. Ha ha ha. But it looks more like Bumblebee than the original Bumblebee toy did, at least as far as cartoon accuracy goes. Uh, you got separate legs instead of one big foot, you know, and then just the even the Volkswagen just looks beefier and looks heavier. It's a great idea to bring back some of the original characters. Again, you can see where they're just trying very hard to save the Pretender lineup. But in this case, they actually delivered a very fun and very solid Bumblebee. How are we supposed to know it would be our last brand new mold Bumblebee until 2006? That was uh, unforeseen, but you know what? 
the toy held up. If we're going to give pretenders their due in this year, then we might as well get a few more out of the way uh, and talk about some mega pretenders. So this was kind of what you kind of hoped the pretenders were from the start. The shells transform, the inner robots transform, and they actually look like real transformers. And then the vehicle modes combine into a super vehicle. And if we're talking about mega pretenders, you got to talk about Thunderwing. So for starters, I will admit, um, I kind of find the inner robots vehicle mode a little bit weak. A little bit, just just a little bit weak. You know, it looks like one of those big novelty fat pens with like four little winglets popped out of it. But I can't deny design and just being freaking cool. Um, Thunderwing in general is just an incredibly cool looking design. I love how he looks, even in the shell. I, I mean, I'm talking about the shell here. Love how the shell looks. Love the super space age kind of like almost kind of mutant look to the to the jet mode. Like it looks like something otherworldly, which is a great little thing to do. I mean, it gives him a lot more character. And really, you know, you look at that robot mode and you look you look at the robot shell and you look at the vehicle mode and like it's hard to spot one from the other. Like I know it's a very simple transformation. It's wearing a backpack of jet parts, but it pulls it off pretty well. I actually do enjoy the look of this figure itself, and the play pattern, yes, is a lot of fun. That said, it's not the last Mega Pretender we're going to talk about on this list, because I do think there is one that did it better, but that's a few minutes from now. Now, including the MicroMasters in a list like this is really difficult because an individual MicroMaster is never going to compare to a larger scale Transformer. Uh, they're just too simplistic, no action features, etc. And even the ones that come with vehicles and bases have a hard time standing up to just like a really big, solid, chunky Transformer. And let's be honest, a lot of those little bases they came with, you really needed to have a cluster of them for them to get really, really cool unless you had countdown this is an enormous base okay for starters let's just like appreciate the thematic parts of this so you have a full rocket with the launch pad with the carrier with the carrier for the sh for you know for the sh you know for the the rocket the rocket itself has a mini base mode the the micromaster is a lunar rover which is great plays into that really really well and then just the base itself is absolutely huge there's lots of places for other micromasters to sit but it's the one base that really feels substantial even if you own just the one now it still interconnects if you had other micromaster bases they connected together you could start making a whole city out of these which is where micromasters start to get cool but that does require multiple toys and sets this is the one that does everything all on its own and this is ripe for just buying a four pack of Autobot MicroMasters and just having them running around, mount, you know, sitting at weaponry, you know, taking off for the helicopter pad, like all of the playset stuff that you love to do as a kid. This thing you could provide in one purchase. So if I'm going to include any MicroMaster, I think this is the fair pick. I did say you'd only have to wait a few minutes for me to talk about a Mega Pretender again, right? Okay, so uh, before we head over to Japan uh, to see what the rest of this list looks like, because let's be fair, they were just doing it better at the time. Uh, we do need to talk about one more Mega Pretender. I admit, it might be a personal favorite of mine, but you know what? My list, my rules, we're going to talk about Vroom. I love this thing. I mean... A little bit dumb looking in robot mode. I'm not going to lie about that. Not going to lie about that. However, I think the design work on this is absolutely brilliant. So for starters, I really like the inner robot, you know, and I think it does a better job of looking like a vehicle than Thunderwing's inner robot did. Granted, you know, it doesn't look great either. There are still the limitations of being a pretender, but I do think it does a considerably better job. You know, I like the motorcycle mode. You know, um, gigantic motorcycle, but hey, it's a fun thing for the shell to turn into. And then you have the combination. And this is where I really think this does a lot of good, because let's be honest, like having that car turn into an actual sidecar to connect onto the motorcycle is a pretty genius idea for the design. 
right? So you can have two very different vehicles or combine them into one vehicle. It makes total sense. I think it's a really clever use. And considering most of the, a lot of the mega pretender is really just like, it's a jet. You stick the jet on front. It's a bigger jet. It's a helicopter. Stick another helicopter on the back. It's a bigger helicopter. This does it a little bit differently. And I definitely, and I just think it's a really smart way of using the play pattern. I think it's, I think, I just think it's a really genius idea. So, yeah, um, I will give pretenders their due within the bubble of 1989. And as far as pretenders go in that year, play value wise, I think this is my favorite one. Now we go to Japan for the rest of this list. And I will admit this is where we start cheating because every, most everything after this was provided in a multi-pack. That said... Uh, pretty much everything I've talked about was its own variety of multi-pack, so I think in this year, this is absolutely fair. So let's basically just start counting down the victory toys, which is essentially what this is. And we're going to start with Road Caesar. So we're going to give Road Caesar some credit. As a combiner, very, very clean. Everything it's, that gets used in order to actually build him into Road Caesar himself is something that integrates into all the other individual vehicles, which is nice of them to do. A lot of times those combiner bits just kind of had to sit aside, you know? Uh, this did not do that, so you ended up with something a lot cleaner. I uh, And then, yeah, of course, it's using the new Brain Master gimmick. So on top of the fact that it's got to combine like this, and it's got to work with only three figures that are all the same size, as opposed to literally like every other combiner previous, I think it does a really nice job of pulling off the entire play pattern. I'm only putting it at the bottom of the victory list because, well, let's be honest, um, he ain't the nicest looking in combined mode. Uh, proportionally, this is a design that's always going to be very, very challenging. But for 1989, it's a kind of fun idea, and it lets you form a giant robot without having to buy five or six toys at a time. So credit where credit's due. There is a lot to like in them. Another combiner team for number five, and this time we have to go to the Decepticon side of things, which, you know, means there's only two options if you know your victory, and you're probably betting one of them is never going to be number five, which kind of means we have to talk about Dino King. I really like the Dino Force. I like that they switched up the shells from generic monsters that, honestly, I mean, never, like, I mean, obviously there's an aesthetic there, but it was never one for me. I like the idea of the dinosaurs better. I mean, dinosaurs, I think, are just more fun than that. And maybe that's just, you know, the kid in me still going off. But I think it made for a more thematic set than just random monsters, right? And I think the overall combination and look and the color scheme that they've got going on for Dino King is better than Monstructor. Um, it's just a nicer play pattern in general. So you get the nice combiner thing. You get the pretender play pattern in there. The pretenders are doing something a little bit different. Cause let's remember pretender beasts didn't make it past 1988. It's just this set. So when you think about it, that is like the last hurrah of the pretender beasts. Now it's a little bit more interesting to me and overall. Yeah, it's a fun little set. A lot, lots of little things going on here that makes me happy. So, admittedly, personal preference puts it to that point for me, but hey, my list, my rules, I like it. Now is the point where we start to get controversial. So, the Decepticon gimmick of the year was the Breast Force, where the chest came off to become weaponry, or an animal companion. Well, guess what? Um, it's the leader that ends up in number four right now. Death Source is an awesome design. Yes, it's it's the Chrome Robo Chicken of Doom. We we know we all know this one by now. Uh, it's just a cool dragon, you know. And I love me a really cool robotic dragon. And then there is just how well it uses the play pattern. Like they they do this a lot. They do this a lot. Like they did this with Fortress Maximus too. And it's like, well, what if we did gimmick but double? So he has two Breast Force members. Uh, you know, and we, you know, so we have lion breast, we have eagle breast, and we giggle over those names, but they make for really cool accessory pieces. He almost has a sound wave aspect to how his gimmick works on top of being a big robot dragon that looks really cool in robot mode. 
the shout out for this video is appropriate because this is where you really start to see the beginning of Brave as far as just a design aesthetic within Takara. Um, and, you know, it's not a bad design aesthetic. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Death Source, really cool toy. But we gotta be honest with ourselves. There just is, there just are, there just is more interesting toys done that year here's another one that a lot are going to put lower on this list but hear me out 1989 was all about play pattern whether it was having bases that connected to each other or you know had all your built-in combiner parts you know with your you know with your teams of transformers or you know shells that transformed along with you all of it was about play pattern and play value how much could you play with it and really technically there's no toy better than that in 1989 than land cross and the multi-force i know if you look at them individually they are not the best looking or most interesting transformers but i find on an engineering level they are absolutely genius think of how simple these figures are a lot of these are literally just pull legs out, rotate arms up, and that's your transformation to robot mode. So they're not that much more advanced than MicroMasters. In fact, many of us collectors got to ex you know, experience this set for the first time when they sold them as DX MicroMasters later on. But the idea of all of these guys being able to form an upper and lower body and any of the six could combine with one of the others to form a larger robot. It's very Transformers Energon a long time before Transformers Energon. And this is also the advent of, with also the, like, the little caveat of every, every one of their torso modes had a unique head. So they, so they went actually a little bit further. It's one of those ideas where the simplicity of the design allows them to push what they can do on an engineering level further when it comes to the play pattern. And when you're just messing around and coming up with your own favorite combinations and trying to figure out what the official names of them would be, that's where you have a lot of fun. And then, of course, you can just combine them all in together and, uh, in, you know, into Land Cross. And, you know, that's great, too. Yeah, there's just so much to do with this set. Uh, lots of play value and yeah simple but effective we're approaching the end of this list now and if you know me um you know who's probably going to be number one but you might be wrong it's a coin flip situation but for now guess what number two victory saber I know you thought I would put star saber at number one I'm a huge star saber fanboy we all know this however even I can admit when my favorites have flaws, and as much as I love Star Saber and Victory Leo, there are flaws to the design. But I mean, for starters, the toys are brilliant. Let's not get that cross. Like, outside of a boxy Victory Leo jet mode, the toys themselves are absolutely brilliant. There's a lot of stuff to do. You've got the Brain Master gimmick, and then, like I said, it's kind of doubled up. So you can do a Brain Master and then a Power Master Optimus Prime thing. Um, so you've got a lot of different tiers of play value in Star Saber alone, you know, and then of course there's Victory Leo, Triple Changer, combines in vehicle mode, combines in robot mode, looks awesome the entire way through. It's a fantastic set of figures. If I'm talking about flaws, there is the squared off nature of Victory Leo's jet mode, so it doesn't really look like it can fly, space vehicle, whatever, right? I've mentioned it before, my only dissatisfaction with Victory Saber is the fact that Victory Leo doesn't really play much of a part in the final combination. He's a set of wings, shoulder cannons, and super booties. And that's basically it. I mean, you're still basically seeing Star Saber, but Star Saber just has other things around him now. So it's not the most complete combination. It's really the only thing I can dock the pair, because otherwise fantastic set fantastic set of toys to play with lots of fun lots of different things to do and yeah brilliantly designed they, they just look like a gorgeous set of toys yeah trust me hurts me to put him at number two but i have to be fair about this 
He is fantastic. But there is one that does it better. If this is the cheat year for this countdown series, then of course, number one, it's got to be a full combiner team. I can't just name one character as like the single best toy of 1989. No, 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 no. It's got to be a whole set of characters. It's got to be six, in fact. Let's talk Lyo Kaiser. All right, so for starters, I love the variety we got here. So we've got a kind of a seeker thing going on with Leo Zack, and he's got, you know, two jets flanking him. And then you've got, you know, you got a couple different tanks. You got a race car. So I like the variety that the team brings and kind of, you know, kind of the play pattern there. I like the Breast Force gimmick a lot. They are mini cons before mini cons were a thing. They are both Power Master and Target Master combined. Do you want an animal companion for the robot mode? Do you want him to have an extra gun? You can have both. You can have both. Um, yeah, and you have the animal companion when they're in vehicle mode too, so you have a little bit of extra play there. Um, you know, you can armor them up in robot mode with them. Extra play there. And then, of course, the combination. It is possible that you could consider Lyo Kaiser the best combiner in all of Generation 1. There is no G1 combiner that's fully built in, but Lyo Kaiser comes the closest. The only additional part is the helmet. Everything else, the hands, the feet, every little combination component is all built in to the existing figures. And the existing figures themselves, aside from one made of gold plastic, are all fine in and of themselves. This is a brilliant set of toys with a lot of play value going on with just the breast force gimmick alone and then you work in all the combinations. And yes, um, as, you know, as opposed to Land Cross, who technically has more play value, these just look better and these are just more satisfying as individual transformers. Like I'm not gonna take that away from them. So yeah, I have to cheat to get there but I will call Lyo Kaiser the best toy of 1989, provided you consider Lyo Kaiser the toy. <laughs> and breaking into six smaller toys is the feature of him. But that is going to do it. Um, admittedly, I don't think there's a fair way to do this year. It would be an extremely skewed list if I did. So if I'm going to talk about the characters you want to hear me talk about, this was the only way to do it. And frankly, 1990 is going to be worse. <laughs> 1990 and 91 are going to be the real dregs of this entire discussion. Uh, we are going to have to figure that one out when we come to it. But I kind of do these like every week and a half or so. Uh, so it's a future TJ problem. Uh, current TJ is going to thank you for watching. Uh, and he appreciates all of you, whether you are just hitting like, uh, hitting subscribe, leaving a comment, or yes, even pitching into Patreon. I appreciate all of you for helping me do what I do. So thank you, everyone. I will see you next time.